Hello, Concrete Maniacs. My name is Tyler Lay, and in this video, we're gonna talk about formwork removal and how it impacts the durability of our concrete. Formwork removal? Yeah, forms. They're the things that hold the concrete up as it goes from a liquid to a solid. Some people think that as soon as the concrete's hard, you can take the forms off but there's more to the story, and I'll prove it to you today. We'll talk about if you have to move fast, if you have to take your forms off quickly, what can you do to extend your concrete's life? And we'll give you advice on the best practices. Then we'll actually quantify what the reduction in life of the concrete will be if you have to pull your forms off early. It's gonna be awesome. I want to thank my co-authors on this work. There's been a number of students at Oklahoma State University that have helped make this happen. Also, this research was sponsored by the Minnesota Department of Transportation. So why are we here? Well, contractors are requesting to remove their wall forms early because forms are expensive. And if I can reuse them, I can make more concrete faster. I can make more money. I can get the bridges or the roads or the buildings opened up faster so that people can use them, and that's a good thing. But the concrete may have sufficient strength, but if you take the forms off, you're gonna stop curing the concrete. Curing is holding moisture into the concrete. Curing is really important for the durability of our concrete. So let's. how does this impact durability? Let's figure that out. In phase one, we're gonna look at how different time links and different types of forms impact the effectiveness of the curing. And in phase two, we're gonna say, hey, guess what? If I have to take my forms off early, what can I do to extend my curing? So how are we gonna do this? How are we gonna test a wall? Because it'd be expensive to cast a whole wall. Well, we're gonna cast actually a chunk, just a piece out of the wall. And if you think about that chunk of the wall, there's no moisture leaving this direction, this direction, or this direction. So we're gonna make samples with an impermeable membrane all the way around the outside. And we're gonna use a formed surface over here, just like you would on the wall. This is what they look like after you take the forms off. They've got this impermeable membrane around the outside, it's got this formed surface here, and it was cured in this orientation. So what did we do? Well, after we were done curing, we actually first put it in a drying room and we dried it out. Then we dunked it in water and we let water go inside of it. And then we dunked it in chlorides and we let chlorides go inside of it. And we measured how deep did the chlorides penetrate. We measured how much mass did it lose as it dried. Let's show you. In this plot, we're showing drying time versus the amount of mass that was lost and I'm showing the wood, the steel, and the rubber forms. On this graph, the higher you are, the better you are. So this is better performing than this, than this. So the wood performed the best. They're not that different, but all of that information I just talked about was for 12 hours. Now let's show the same type of data, but let's say we cured it for 24 hours. They're moved up a little bit. Now let's cure them for 72 hours. And again, it's moved up even more. So higher on this graph is better. This means the longer we kept our forms on the surface of our concrete, the better it was at, at resisting drying. That means the tighter the microstructure is. That's good, that's what you want. So the samples are losing water as they dry. And the better the curing, the less the mass was lost. And wood forms seem to be the best, followed by steel and then rubber. And the longer you cure the sample, the less moisture is being lost. And this shows, this is important, that extended curing in the forms does impact the ability of your microstructure to resist water loss. And this means that the concrete should be better at resisting outside chemical penetration. We're gonna test that coming up. So while there were some differences, there's not huge differences in the types of forms. So I wouldn't make everyone use wood forms. Let them use whatever forms they want to. For phase two, we're going to use steel forms because it's somewhat in the middle and they're pretty widely used. After we've cured for 12 hours, we're gonna try to extend the curing by using different methods. For example, we may try putting plastic on the outside, or we may try wet curing them, or we may try spraying a curing compound on the outside of them. 
We're also gonna still do the same old curing in the molds for 24 hours and 72 hours, and we're gonna compare how all of these compare to one another. In this graph, the x-axis shows the days exposed to drying, and the y-axis shows the amount of mass that was lost. So the more mass that you lose, the worse your concrete is. And the less mass you lose, the better your concrete is because it's trying to pull that water out. And so if it does a good job of holding it in, that's good, that's good. And I know it's kind of hard to read these things, but I've got a, them listed here on the outside in order of performance. So if we left the molds on for 72 hours, that was the best. And then if we're gonna take them off at 12 hours, using some kind of plastic or curing compound did pretty well. And then the wet curing didn't do very well at all. I'll talk about that in just a second. And then here we are again at 12 hours. So the sample cured in the steel molds for 12 hours did the worst. And the sample in the steel molds for 72 hours, that was the best. And the samples that were sealed in plastic for three days and seven days and the curing compounds had a slightly lower performance to the samples that were cured in the steel molds for 72 hours. And the wet curing samples, they didn't perform very well. And this is probably because the burlap did not hold the moisture on the surface. What am I talking about? Well, the burlap on the outside, it probably didn't do a very good job of holding it on the surface. Burlap, that's this cloth, and it's got a kind of an open system to it. So when it's open and it's on the side, it's not really doing a great job of holding water in. So that water just drains right out of the burlap. But now if you use burlap flat, that's good. That's a pretty good thing. Because again, it's going to hold that water. Gravity's gonna hold that water down and it's gonna keep it moist. So burlap is great on flat surfaces. Burlap is not very good on vertical surfaces. Now maybe there's some other material that does better, but we didn't investigate it in this study. Next, we're gonna dunk everything in, in inside chlorides. We're gonna let the chlorides penetrate. We're gonna cut the concrete and map it with this sweet technique called an XRF microscope. What it does is it takes x-rays and focuses and focuses them down to a spot and then measures them on the surface. And you can map the surface of the concrete like this. I mean, how beautiful is this, right? This is a map of the inside of the concrete. And what, what everything that's gray here are aggregates. And everything that these different shades of blue are different amounts of chlorides that have made it or penetrated down inside the concrete. So what, what we've done in this middle image is we've pulled out the aggregates and you can just see the blue. Dark amounts of blue, then it gets a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter, and then the gray is the background. That means the chlorides haven't made it there. What we're able to do is compare how deep the chlorides have penetrated into the concrete and compare the different curing methods to see which one's the best. Here's a comparison where we've used the fancy microscope first grinding the surface. And grinding the surface is time consuming, but that's what some people do and they test the powder. Okay, and we get a great agreement to the powder. That's pretty awesome. This is what the information looks like. The higher, this is the chloride amount and this is the depth. The higher you are on this graph, that means the more the chlorides have made it in. There's two factors when you go to compare these things. You wanna look at the slope of these lines, and that's how you calculate something called the effective diffusion co coefficient using something called fixed second law, which I've shown a version of the solution to it in the upper right-hand corner. And then you also need something called the surface concentration. This is how many, sur how many chlorides are bound at the surface of the concrete. We're gonna use this computer program called Life365 to predict the performance of this concrete if it was in Minneapolis. Modeling can be a little bit challenging to do. We're gonna use it though to get a relative comparison of these different curing methods. I'm showing here all of these different methods that we looked at. These are all methods that we cured for 12 hours and we tried to use some other type of curing method to extend the life. And this is the predicted service life if we have two inches of cover with an epoxy coated reinforcing bar. And this is the percent reduction in the curing life compared to just leaving the molds in place for 24 hours. So for example, we have no reduction, we would expect 42 years of life with the types of concrete that we're using in this experiments for 
curing for 24 hours inside the steel molds. These all compared about the same. The curing compound put afterwards or doing a sealed cure, putting plastic up afterwards. I don't know if that's practical or not, but that's what we wanted to look at, so that's what we looked at. And these are the different lifes. And, I, and I'm saying here, they're all kind of similar. And this is about a 20% reduction in the life of the concrete. About 20% of the life of, of a reduction of the concrete. If you don't leave the molds on for 24 hours, if instead you leave them only on for 12, and then you use curing compounds. Now let's say I use the wet cure or the steel molds, and they all performed pretty, pretty similar to one another. Because remember the wet curing, the burlap just didn't do a great job of holding the water on the surface. And that's about a 33% reduction. About one third of the life of the structure is lost because we cured only for 12 hours and then didn't do a great job of curing after we took the forms off. So there was a measurable difference in the predicted service life for the different curing methods. And you can increase your service life by 33% if you have two inches of cover, if you leave the forms in place for 24 hours instead of 12. That does not mean I'm saying that we always want to leave the forms on for 24 hours. However, if you care about durability, this might be a good thing. You may want to leave the forms on as long as you can. If forms are removed at 12 hours, then it's suggested to use some kind of curing compound on the surface or requiring plastic to be placed on for three days. And the service life is again reduced by about 20% for these concretes, even with this other supplemental curing that you placed on it. If you want to remove your forms early, there's not really a great way to come back with a curing method that's still going to give you the same service life. And the wet curing samples didn't perform well. And this is likely because the burlap can't hold the moisture on the vertical surface. So what does this all mean? If you care about your concrete durability, you need to leave those forms in place for as long as practical. I realize that's gonna cost people money, but guess what? If you're the owner, just pay for it. If you really want the life, just tell them, I want the forms to be in place for X period of time, 24 hours, 72 hours, something like that. Don't worry about the types of forms people are using, and if they have to remove them early, and that's fine if you do, just use a curing compound. And PAMS showed slightly better performance than the dissipative curing compound that we looked at for our study. So in conclusion, curing time within the form does impact the ability for vertical concrete to resist drying and chloride ingress. And there is little difference in resistance to drying between the wood steel and rubber forms. And if you're gonna take the forms off at of 12 hours, then it's recommended to use a dissipative or a PAMS curing compound or sealing for three days. Thank you so much for watching. Please like my videos, subscribe, and leave me a comment below. Thank you so much, take care.